and welcome, I'm your Kodamaki. Unity recently had their yearly Unite conference. I was there and it was great to meet tons of people. In a previous video, I already did a quick summary of the keynote, which is the most important talk in all of these events. Then the second most important talk, that one is the roadmap, which I just made available. They just published the entire recording. There's a link in the description if you want to go see the whole thing for yourself, but here are my quick highlights. Although honestly, there's quite a lot of stuff coming in the future, so my quick summary isn't as quick as I would like. And if you use Unity in any way, check out my Ultimate Unity Overview course. The goal here is to help you learn how to make better games faster by teaching you about tons of Unity tools that can be super useful that you might not know about. I just put out the fifth free update, making in total 70 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. Check it out with the link in the description. Starting off with the most obvious one, which is the naming scheme. Starting next year, Unity will go into a regular version number. So instead of being named off the year, it's simply named Unity 6. But that's really it, it's just a name change. So instead of next year having the 2023 LTS, instead it will simply be Unity 6. It will work just like an LTS, and I believe it's meant to come out towards the end of the year. Now in terms of things coming in the future, there's a ton of stuff. Lots of info on graphics, on new platforms, there's a bunch on multiplayer, and of course, a bunch on AI. Perhaps surprisingly, there is barely a mention of dots here. There's only a vague mention of an integration at the very end. Now, I spoke to Laura at Unite, and from what I understand, their goal right now, this year, their goal is pretty much just stabilization. Their goal is really just focusing on the core and getting that nice and stable. They're actively listening to all the feedback from all the devs that are currently using dots in production. And they are taking all that feedback and pretty much making the core as stable as it can be before they start adding tons of features. Personally, I believe that is a good plan, really focusing on the core before adding tons of stuff. But of course, that does mean that right now there's not much being announced. So maybe 2025, maybe that won't be the year of dots. Now, one very big part about this roadmap is on the entire multiplayer section. And for this entire section, I would say the keyword that stood out for me is pretty much streamlined. Pretty much everything they announced that is coming in the future is meant to make everything simpler and easier to work with. For example, there is a multiplayer center coming soon. This one looks quite interesting. You basically pick from a handful of preset game genres, then set a bunch of fields like how many players, is it fast paced or slow paced? And then it tells you the various Unity Gaming Services tools that would be helpful in that genre and allows you to very easily install all of them in just one click. Laura also mentioned a bunch of specific game templates that are coming soon, so it's going to be interesting to see what genres they focus on. In order to help you iterate faster, they are continuing to work on the multiplayer play mode. If you followed my free multiplayer course, then you know how it actually takes quite a bit of time to make a proper build in order to test anything in multiplayer. So this tool, which pretty much lets you run multiple instances of Unity at the same time, this one should really help speed up iteration. Then real integration is also supposedly going to be quite a bit simpler. Just press a button and it should work. For the multiplayer play mode, they're also making it work very easily with a dedicated server. And speaking of dedicated servers, they're also streamlining just how easy it is to push a build to that dedicated server. I made a tutorial on using game server hosting. And for that, you need to manually make a build. You need to manually upload it to the dashboard and then manually start and then you can connect. So simplifying that entire process with just a simple button click, that sounds awesome. And then they are pretty much taking streamlining to the max by announcing something called the Multiplayer Services SDK. So basically all of these services, these will work with just a single SDK. Now there aren't many details on this, so I'm not entirely sure what this means, but it does seem how instead of just initializing each service individually, you can just work with the SDK and somehow initialize all the men at once. That does sound like it would streamline things, but I'm not entirely sure how this is meant to work in technical terms. Different services require different setups, so I'm not sure how exactly they're going to streamline this process. But I'm definitely curious to hear more, it does sound interesting. Something also great is they are adding a new distributed authority mode, meaning instead of just one host, you can actually have multiple players that have authority over certain parts of the world. The one question I have right away is, so does this mean that Netcode for Game Objects is now going to support much more types of games? For example, could you make a complex, large, open world MMO, something like that in Netcode for Game Objects? If each player does have authority over a certain part of the world, then technically that should be possible, so that sounds interesting. As you can see from all of this, there's lots of stuff on multiplayer. They already got a ton of tools. I already covered a quick video on a whole bunch of those tools. So with all of these tools that already exist, streamlining all of that process in order to be able to use them, that sounds like a really great focus. Then the other big improvements coming in the future are obviously on graphics. This is something that visually looks good, of course. And because of that, most of this was already shown on the keynote itself. Coming in Unity 6 is the GPU resin drawer. Then there's also GPU coming and spatial and temporal post-processing. These are three features that apparently are enabled with just a single button click and make every scene run pretty much faster. Now for me, as someone who is not a graphics programmer, I always enjoy hearing how with just one button click my game won't perform faster. Then coming in the future are Adaptive Pro Volumes. These look really awesome. They're already available right now in AGRP and Unity 6. They will also be coming to URP, supported on both mobile, PC and consoles. These let you have some really high quality lighting. 
It almost looks ray traced, but importantly, at a fraction of the cost. It supports data streaming for super large worlds. It works with VFX particles and you can make it per pixel or per vertex. So all in all, this feature looks really awesome. It looks like it will really impact the lighting quality of pretty much every Unity game. Then the VFX ref is also getting a bunch of improvements. There's going to be a custom HLSL block, allowing you to write custom shader code and work directly with VFX ref. It is getting support for six-way lighting in order to make your particles look much, much better. It will also support motion vectors, which from what I understand allows you to build some really complex things. And it will support spawning details, which sounds like an interesting use case. By the way, if you want to learn how to use the regular decal projector, I just added a lecture to it on my latest free update to my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Then Shader Graph is also getting a bunch of improvements. One interesting one is a heat map color mode. This one basically tends your Shader Graph nodes in different colors depending on how performance intensive they are. This should be really good for helping you make your shaders much more performant. There are also a bunch of new samples. I really want to find the time to be able to look at these. I've seen a few of them, they look really nice. Then a bunch of general performance improvements. For VR, it is getting foveated rendering. This is a really excellent feature that I really hope a lot more games are going to start to adopt. And AGRP is also getting a bunch of enhancements to their water and lighting and so on. So rendering does seem to be improving quite a lot in Unity 6, and a lot of it in ways that benefit even people like myself who don't really push visuals to the limit. Then the future of platforms. As always, Unity continues to support pretty much any platform that exists. The big one coming soon is the Apple Vision Pro and Vision OS. Unity was right there as soon as the official announcement was announced. The device is coming next year and you can right now start working with the Vision OS SDK. Sometimes the best thing you can do is simply be early on a brand new device. So if you have some interesting ideas for the Apple Vision Pro, then maybe look into the SDK and maybe get something ready right before launch. AR and VR are also getting a bunch of improvements. There's cross-platform input, hand tracking and gestures, and a bunch of project templates. I still haven't found the time to be able to touch VR, but it's amazing to see how it keeps improving day by day, year by year. Another big platform is mobile, and apparently one huge addition is adding support for mobile web support. This is what got the most amount of applause during the roadmap talk. Now I'm not a mobile expert, but apparently it's a big deal to be able to run Unity on a mobile web browser without requiring you to install a native app. Related to that is WebGPU. This is the new standard that is currently being worked on that technically grants the browser direct access to the GPU. This would make graphically intensive games possible even on just a simple web browser. That does sound really interesting, although from what I understand, this standard is still very much in its infancy. So I believe it is still going to take quite some time until this is probably implemented in every browser. In order to help you build for these platforms, that is going to be a very expanded build profiles window. This seems like a really great addition to once again streamline everything. So with this, there will no longer be a need for making complex editor build scripts. You can just do it straight from this window, make as many profiles as you want for debug, for release builds, for supporting Android, iOS, Windows, and so on. So this is one of those things that looks tiny, but should be extremely helpful. And then obviously they are working a ton on AI. Synthes is their on-device model, which is available right now. And they've already released early access to their Muse tool stack. There's Muse chat, sprite, and texture that are available right now. And behavior, animate, and sketch, those are coming soon. One improvement that I definitely want to see is just how quickly will Muse chat learn about new Unity features. Personally, that use case seems extremely useful to me. Whenever I make videos on some new tool, I have to do a ton of research. That involves a lot of reading documentation, a lot of trial and error. I have to do all of that because when I cover some brand new tool, there are no tutorials. So being able to ask Muse Chat some questions about some new tool, I think that could help me in my own process. They're also planning to continue improving the models for texture and sprite. And for this, I would say they definitely do need to do that. I only briefly used these tools in a live stream a while ago and I definitely found the output to be subpar. It works for super quick prototypes, but not much else. Basically the issue as it were, the issue is that they are actually doing things the right way. They are licensing all the data to make sure there are no copyright issues for you as the developer. That's a great thing, but of course, because of them being slow and careful, that means those tools are quite underdeveloped when compared to any other tool. Basically, right now, these generation tools, these are outputting what the other AI tools were outputting about two years ago, so they're quite a bit behind. Personally, I do like their focus on actually solving the copyright issue. I think that's a great thing and that is definitely something they should focus on, but it does come at the cost of quality. So I do hope in the next year they really improve these models. Then the big ones coming in the future are behavior, animate, and sketch. For behavior, this one won't let you design behavior trees. Honestly, for this one, I'm not really interested in the AI specific parts, but that tool for having the various graphs for describing various behavior states, I think that tool, even without some AI, I think that could be very useful. Then for animate, personally, as someone who can't really animate anything, for this one, I'm very interested. It does sound quite useful. And for sketch, this one lets you create entire prototypes just based on natural language. And importantly, it is made with real-time collaboration in mind. So I think this tool, this one can be quite useful when doing something like a game jam. 
All in all, AI is still a topic that a lot of people dislike. So over the coming year, they really need to make these tools look insanely useful in order to convince developers to actually use them in their workflow. And then even further out, there's a slide on the very far future. Basically, their focus is still on iteration speed. Andrew mentioned how the goal is to have no loading bars. That definitely sounds like a great focus. Then upgrading their .NET version and continuing to upgrade to Core CLR. And like I said, lots of dots entities integration. That will come over time after the core is nice and stable. So as you can see from all of this, there's lots coming in the future. Lots on graphics, multiplayer, and really just making everything more streamlined. Unity definitely made a big blunder when they announced the runtime fee, which will start to take effect on this version, Unity 6. Even with the changes they made to it and how the final proposed fee, even how that sounds pretty reasonable, despite that, a lot of people still feel like they broke their trust, so they need to work really hard to regain that. And thankfully, looking at this Unite keynote and the roadmap, it does seem like they're working really hard to make Unity 6 a really awesome version. All of these updates sound really awesome, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing all of this come to fruition. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. What did you think about the keynote and now the roadmap in general? If you want, you can go watch the full one-hour roadmap video. There's even more detail on some of these topics and a bunch more that I didn't have time to cover. Also, check out my Ultimate Unity Overview course to help you make better games faster. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.